Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment we bring to you objective questions on a daily basis to help you crack pranam. So let's begin with the practice question of the last segment. Consider the following statements regarding Ramana Kali temple. The temple in the area dedicated to the goddess Kali is believed to have been built during the Mughal period. The historic Ramana Kali temple is a symbol of the spiritual and cultural bonding amongst the people of India and Cambodia. So we have to select the correct statement or statements. First is correct. Second is not correct because it is a symbol of spiritual and cultural bonding between India and Bangladesh, not Cambodia. So the correct answer is option A, that is one only. Recently, the Indian president has inaugurated the reconstructed Ramana Kali temple in Ramana Dhaka, Bangladesh, where the landmark Suravardi Udyan, the former Ramana race course, is located. The historic Ramana Kali temple is a spiritual and uh, symbolic of spiritual and cultural bonding between India and Bangladesh. The temple in the area dedicated to the goddess Kali is believed to have been built during the Mughal period. It is believed to be 400 years old, even though it is difficult to pinpoint a year in which it was built. The temple was built by a Hindu sect, but it is difficult to identify exactly who built it. However, it is said that it was built by a certain Hari Charan Giri, who was a Mahant in the temple. It was not a very large temple and was fairly ordinary in terms of its architecture. It is the second oldest Hindu temple in Bangladesh. The Dhakeshwari temple being the oldest. Remember this. Moving on. Consider the following statements. Article 239 to 242 under part 9 of the Indian constitution deals with the administration of union territories. The union territories of Puducherry is provided with a legislative assembly and a council of ministers headed by a chief minister. Every union territory is administered by the prime minister acting through an administrator appointed by him. So we have to select the correct statement or statements. First is outrightly incorrect because article 239 to 242 are in part 8 of the Indian constitution dealing with the administration of union territories. Second is definitely correct. Third is also incorrect because UT is administered by president acting through an administrator appointed by him. The correct answer is option B, two only. The Chief Minister of Puducherry recently expressed confidence that the centre would grant statehood for the Union Territory of Puducherry. Article 239 to 242 under Part 8 of the Indian Constitution deals with the administration of Union Territories. Every Union Territory is administered by the President acting through an administrator appointed by him. An administrator of a Union Territory is an agent of the President and is not actually a head like the Governor. The president can specify the designation of an administrator. It can be lieutenant or lieutenant governor or chief commissioner or administrator. The Union Territories of Puducherry in 1963, Delhi in 1992 and Jammu and Kashmir in 2019 are provided with a legislative assembly and a council of ministers headed by chief minister. But the establishment of such institutions in the Union Territories does not diminish the supreme control of the president and parliament over them. The parliament can make laws on any subject of the three lists, including the state list for the union territory. Moving on, consider the following statements regarding Chilika Lake. It was designated the first Indian wetland of international importance under the Ramsar Convention. It is the largest saltwater lagoon of Asia. And we have to select the correct statement or statements. Both are correct. The correct answer is option C. Recently, during regular patrolling, the Odisha Forest Department staff detected carcasses of 29 migratory birds dumped at Ratamati near Bada Pokhira. Every year in winters, migratory birds arrive at the water bodies around Chiriga Lake, Asia's largest saltwater lagoon, and Bhitar Karnika, the second largest mangrove forest in India, because the largest is Sundarbans in West Bengal. In 1981, Chilika Lake was designated the first Indian wetland of international importance under the Ramsar Convention. Major attractions at Chilika is Iravadi Dolphin, which are often spotted at Satapada Island. Moving on, which of the following statements is our correct regarding Atal Bihari Bajpayee? He participated in the Quit India movement. He has been conferred the second highest civilian award or the honor, the Padma Vibhushan. We have to select the correct statement. Both are correct. The correct answer is option C. 
So, Good Covenance Day is celebrated annually on 25th December to mark the birth anniversary of the former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Atal Bihari Vajpayee was born on 25th December 1924 in the erstwhile princely state of Gwalior, which is now a part of Madhya Pradesh. He entered the national politics during the Quit India movement of 1942 and that hastened the end of British colonial rule. In 1947, Vajpayee started working as a journalist for newspapers of the Indayal Upadhyay, the Rashtra Dharma, which is a Hindi monthly, Panchajanya, which is a Hindi weekly, and the dailies Swadesh and Veer Arjun. Later, influenced by Shama Prasad Mukherjee, he joined the Bharati Jan Sangh in 1951. He was the former Prime Minister of India and was elected to the position twice, 96 and 1999. He was conferred with the country's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna in 2015, and second highest civilian award, the Padma Bhushan in 1994. Which of the following countries share a border with Mozambique? South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Botswana. We have to select the correct answer using the codes. South Africa and Botswana. They both have a border with Mozambique, but not Kenya and Tanzania. So the correct answer is one and four. That is option C. Recently, India handed over. two fast interceptor craft and other self defense equipment to Mozambique to assist in its capacity building as the central african nation battles growing terror threats mozambique borders tanzania malawi zambia zimbabwe south africa and eswatini its long indian ocean coastline of 2500 kilometers face east to madagascar capital is maputo okay remember which of the following is or are the consequences of depreciation of rupees increase in imported inflation difficulty in maintaining low interest rates products and services of india will become costlier to buy so we have to select the correct answer using the codes first and second are correct definitely correct but not the third so the correct answer is option a1 and 2 only now currency depreciation is a fall in the value of a currency in a floating exchange rate system not fixed rupee depreciation means that the rupee is now weaker than what it used to be earlier impact of depreciation of indian rupee positive when a weaker currency may support exports amidst a nascent economy recovery from the pandemic negative is it poses risk of imported inflation and may make it difficult for the central bank to maintain interest rates at a record low for longer a currency appreciation is an increase in the value of one currency in relation to another currency and currency appreciation discourages the country's export activities that its products and services become costly to buy moving on To the next question, consider the following statements with respect to Renuka Ji Dam. The dam is conceptualized as a three-way project. It is to be constructed along the Yamuna and two of its tributaries, the Tones and Giri. After the construction of the dam, the flow of River Giri will decrease by about 110 percent. So we have to select the correct statements. Both first and second are definitely correct, not the third, because after the construction of the dam, the flow of River Giri will increase by about 110 percent. So the correct answer to this question is option C, one and two only. PM Modi visited Mandi in Himachal Pradesh and inaugurated as well as laid the foundation stone of hydropower projects worth over eleven thousand crore rupees today. Renuka Ji Dam is conceptualized as a three-way project to be constructed along the Yamuna and two of its tributaries, Tones and Giri. The project envisages construction of a hundred and forty-eight meter high rock filled dam for supplying twenty-three cubic meters per second. That means 23 cumex water to Delhi and other basin states. Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh are the two states involved. Project was conceived in 2008, and most of the irrigation cost and the drinking water component of the project will be funded by the central government. The six beneficiary states would chip in with 10% of the expenditure, and after the construction of the dam, the flow of River Giri will increase by 110%. It will meet the drinking water needs of Delhi and other basin states. Up to some extent in the lean period. Moving on, with respect to Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, consider the following statements. He was given the title of Mahamana by Lala Lajpat Rai, and he was elected as the president of the Congress Committee four times. So we have to select the correct statement or statements. First is incorrect because the title of Mahamana was given to him by Mahatma Gandhi, and second is correct. The correct answer is option B, two only. Let's move on to the explanation addressing a function on the occasion of the 160th birthday of Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya in New Delhi. Amit Shah ji told that he is credited 
with laying many foundations of modern Indian nationals. The birth of Pandit Mahadan Mohan Malviya is on 25th December and he was born in 1861 in Allahabad, which is now Prayagraj in Uttar Pradesh. He was a great educationist, pioneer, an eloquent rhetorician and national leader. Also, he was given the title of Mahamana by Mahatma Gandhi and the second president of India, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan gave him the status of Karmi Yogi. He was elected as the president of the Congress Committee four times in 1909, 1918, 1932 and 1933. He is remembered for his role in ending the Indian indenture system, especially in the Caribbean. The first of its kind defense technologies and test center has recently been inaugurated in which of the following states? Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, Arunachal Pradesh. So the correct answer to this question is option B, that is Uttar Pradesh. The defense minister laid the foundation stone for a defense technology and test center and Brahmo's manufacturing center in Lucknow yesterday. It is established by the DRDO and a first of its kind defense technologies and test center is spread over approximately 22 acres. It is being set up to accelerate the growth of the defense and in aerospace manufacturing clusters in Uttar Pradesh defense industrial corridor. Consider the following statements with respect to Trans-Pacific Partnership. It was proposed trade agreement between the ASEAN countries and the USA. It was signed in 2018. We have to select the not correct statement. Both are not correct. Okay. So, although some Asian, ASEAN countries are a part of it, it wasn't conceived like it should be signed between ASEAN and USA. Many other countries are also there. And it was signed in the year 2016. So, option C is correct over here. Kyodo News reported that the meeting was held at Japan's LDP has stepped up exchanges with the Taiwanese ruling party. That means Japan and Taiwan are coming together. In the meeting, the LDP welcomed Taipei's bid. Taipei is the capital of Taiwan. To join the Trans-Pacific Partnership Free Trade Agreement between 11 Pacific Rim countries. Trans-Pacific Partnership or Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement was proposed trade agreement between Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, Vietnam and the US. It was signed on 4th February 2016 and the US President Donald Trump withdrew the US signature from TPP in January 2017. The agreement could not be ratified as required and did not enter into force. The remaining countries negotiated a new trade agreement called Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership which incorporates most of the provisions of TPP and which entered into force on 30 December 2018. Moving on, with respect to Naxalism, consider the following statements. It was initiated in 1967 under the leadership of Kanu Sanyal and Jungle Santhal. Operation Green Hunt was started in 2009 to pacify the Naxalism. So we have to select the correct statement. Both these statements are correct. The correct answer is option C. At least six Naxals were killed in an encounter with security forces in Chhattisgarh, Telangana border area today. The term Naxalism derives its name from the village Naxalbadi of West Bengal. It originated as rebellion against local landlords who bashed a peasant over a land dispute. The rebellion was initiated in 1967 under the leadership of Kanu Sanyal and Jungle Santan. Its objective was to rightfully redistribute the land to working peasants. It was started in West Bengal. The movement although started there but spread across the eastern India and specifically in least, least developed areas of states such as Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. It is considered that Naxal support Maoist political sentiments and ideology. Operation Green Hunt started in 2009 and massive deployment of security forces was done in Naxal affected areas and it helped a lot. Moving on, let's look at the practice question for the next segment. Consider the following pairs. H-1B visa, skilled workers, G visas, representatives to international organizations, E visas from ambassadors. From, so we have to select the correct statement or statements using the codes. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.